Good evening. I'd like to thank the business record for recognizing me as a woman of influence and also those who nominated me. It is very humbling. I would also like to congratulate the other recipients of this distinguished award and all the women that came before us and showed us the way. My apologies for not being there this evening in person. This is one event I wouldn't want to miss. The only reason I'm unable to attend is a pre-planned post-COVID trip with my husband and family, which we planned eight months ago. I also want to send a very special shout out to my many friends who are attending in my absence this evening. They showed up even though I'm not there. Wow, you fill my heart with love and joy. Thank you so much. A little background, I was raised on a small farm in Northwest Iowa. I was number five in a lineup of six children and was fortunate to be raised by hardworking and loving parents. When I was 14, my brother left for college and I was recruited by my dad to help outside with all the farm related chores. Working alongside my dad, I learned so many life lessons. First and foremost among them, hard work never hurt anyone. I had empathy and compassion for the livestock I fed and ending the day knowing I made a little bit of a difference. He also taught me the value of being independent and solving problems. Many of you in the audience raised in a rural environment know how self-sufficient you or your parents had to be in order to get by. No matter how hot or cold, rainy or snowy it was, jobs on the farm had to get done. Feeding the livestock, putting up hay, walking beans were just a few of the chores we did. We worked hard every day, but I didn't know that. It's truly an experience in life I would never give up. My mom was the rock of the family. My father suffered a debilitating stroke in his brainstem when he was just 68 years old, one year after retiring. Putting it into perspective, that's only eight years older than I am right now. It's a reminder to me to focus on what's important every day. He was bed bound with a feeding tube and nonverbal. My mother cared for him in our home for more than 17 years. How she did what she did astounds me to this day. I watched her lovingly care and cater to his every need, never complaining once. After my father passed, my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Some of my best lessons in life were about compassion, empathy, and service, of which I witnessed firsthand from my mom. I'm sure it's what motivates me to this day. In our wonderful community, I was drawn to children, families, and the elderly. They also tend to be communities which can sometimes be overlooked. I know these experiences in my life have shaped in part who I am. Being involved with nonprofits that serve children and families has always been a priority for Dan and I. Whether it's Children and Families of Iowa, Young Women's Resource Center, or being engaged reading to preschoolers for United Way to help them improve their comprehension and literacy before kindergarten. I find volunteering in these areas rewarding and fulfilling. In the last few years, I've spent time with ChildServe. Their mission is simple. We partner with families to help children with special health care needs live a great life. I think Terry Wallig and her team do exactly just that. I've had many opportunities to learn from Terry, her staff, and other board members how this mission truly changes children's lives. If you haven't taken the tour, I would encourage you to do so. In fact, give me a call. I would love to take you on a tour myself. Additionally, I started serving as a volunteer with hospice several years ago. Since both my parents were recipients of hospice, I saw firsthand the personal care they received and how it enriched their lives. I just didn't realize how much it would inspire and enrich my life as well. I've formed wonderful friendships with residents at Edgewater, and through our conversations, I've learned so much about their lives, their grandchildren, their children, spouses, their occupation, their passions. They love talking about these things that mean so much to them, and I love hearing them. I have learned to never underestimate the power of listening, the power of a smile, the power of human touch. It makes a huge difference and it shows you care. I don't mean only in hospice, but also in everyday life. It really is powerful stuff. I'm truly humbled to be included with so many successful women in our community. I want to thank my husband, Dan, and my family for all their support. And to my friends who are here tonight, enjoy the evening, all you cool cats and kittens. Thanks again.